we're on the road to a 600,000 square foot paper factory. Oh, man. A place this large. I think we've found hell. Can swallow you whole. Far, far. We've got one chance to find valuable objects. Whoa, look at this. That's pretty cool. And convince the owner to sell. Would you be willing to let that go? Ah. So what you're saying is no. My name is Jay Chaikin. These are my buddies, Dan and Mark. We made money finding items left behind in abandoned buildings. Whoa. If it's rare, look at that. And it's got history, oh, yeah. we'll make a deal for it. Then restore and resell whatever it takes to save a piece of American history. Guys, welcome to Maine. We're heading to a paper mill. This place is 12 football fields big. That's 600,000 square feet. That's huge. It's the biggest factory we've ever been in. It was built in the 1880s. It was abandoned in 2009. And the best part is, it's in the town of Jay. So as we get closer, we'll probably see billboards of my picture. Don't you think that'll have a negative impact on tourism? <laughs> When a 100-year-old factory like this closes, it's a tragedy for the town. But today, we've got one shot at keeping some of the history of this place alive. Hey, hon. Hey, hon, you almost there? How are we getting into this place? Look for a side entrance near a loading dock. All right. And I can only get you one day in the factory before the owners show up, so you really got to move. That's what we do best. And don't go blowing all our money on the first thing you find. Now, when have I ever done that? Guys, look at the size of this place. I've never been in something this big. At one time, Americans across the country awoke to morning newspapers that were printed on paper by the Otis Falls Pulp and Paper Company. When it opened in 1888, this factory was one of the largest and most advanced paper mills in the world. At its height, the mill employed 1,500 workers running machines that could pump out close to 200 tons of paper per day. In 1997, the aging factory was purchased by a rival paper company, and 12 years later, it was closed forever. All right, guys. Ricky said uh, left side, doors open. Construction of the mill began in the 1880s, and they never stopped adding on. The result is a 600,000 square foot maze of tunnels, hallways, and rooms so vast it straddles two counties. And we've only got one day to explore before the owners arrive to negotiate. All right, guys, just be careful. Ah, oh, everything just says hazard, warning. In a structure this big, the first place we want to hit is the oldest part. Let's get out of this room. Yeah, be careful. And in this case, that's the basement. Man, this is nasty down here. The smell just, ugh. Mark, you hear the rats squeaking? America's hunger for paper brought vast wealth to this region. But these empty halls and rusty machines are only a reminder of better times when this mill turned paper into gold. To most people, these rusted machines are just scrap. But with the right eye, you can spot industrial treasures worth saving. This is not an exit, but... It's like one huge cave down here. I think we've found hell. Guys, this is the heart of what made this place run. Back here is the river. Yeah, behind that wall. So they dammed it up. So the water is just gushing through these big pipes down in here. Hits a turbine. You see the drive shaft there? The horsepower generated in this room crushed whole trees into wood pulp and powered massive machines that rolled out 200 tons of paper per day. Now, this is what I like, guys. Look at that cart. Yep. Down. Slow. That's one heck of a coffee table, huh? That's been there for quite some time. It's got a bum wheel and it's a bad handle, but I'll tell you what, that is a quality cart. The first piece we find looks to be from the turn of the century. Back in the day, pieces like this were handmade in-house. It's a testament to how things used to be done, and that gives it value. If we keep finding pieces like this, we're in for a great trip. I'll make a bid on this. The basement of the factory is desolate. Endless, dark hallways, heavy equipment, and not a lot of objects. This is just getting a little nasty for me down here. Next stop, second floor. 
Hey, now what do we got over here? Look at all the scales. It's just Grand wild balance. It wouldn't occur to most people, but paper making is a science. From the amount of devices in this room, it seems like they did their fair share of measuring and testing. Oh, look at this scale. Yeah. It's only got like a really early look. No, that's really cool. Mark, guess who makes that? Fairbanks. Fairbanks scales were invented in 1830 by Thaddeus and Erastus Fairbanks, two brothers who wanted a better, more dependable measuring device. The company flourished in the industrial age, and by the time of the Civil War, Fairbanks scales were some of the best known American products in the world. This is all cast iron. It's just got a great, great look to it. I'm definitely going to make an offer on this. All right, so let's keep going, man. We got go. so much to look at. Anybody need a locker? You think they made all these lockers here, Chicken? Yes, I would think so. That's all rivets. These are amazing. Great pieces. Every locker tells you, like, a, a personal story. It just looks like they up and left. Guys, the sign says June 6th, last day for mill, all out. We're going down. It's like a ship going down. I guess they were giving their uh, employees a message there, Dan. Yeah. At its height, the Otis Mill provided jobs to 1,500 local workers, a large portion of the population of the surrounding town. Generations of fathers, sons, and grandsons spent their entire lives working here. The lockers are incredible, but the sad thing is they're big, they're all hooked together. Yeah. Yo, check out that fire car. Good eye, Mark. Oh, this is awesome. What does it say there? It says, it says I should buy it. I mean, it's kind of wild looking at how old this, these wheels are and seeing how new these guns are. This car was made by the firefighter company from Dayton, Ohio. Founded in 1916, the company was a pioneer in the design of firefighting equipment and supplied extinguishers to the military during the Second World War. Today, any equipment from the firefighter company is highly collectible, and items like this fire hose cart can be extremely valuable. Definitely a cool piece. You know, I'll make a bid on it and see if we can get it. It can be wheeled out, too, which is nice. Oh, I like wheels. Anything with oh. wheels, man. Check it out. There's another one over here. Check out the other. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Look at it. It had been used sharpened once, and, and there it sits. Yeah, that's nice. No, I like that. There are over 200 museums dedicated to firefighting in North America. Firefighting gear is huge with collectors. Fire cart aside, a piece as simple as this axe could bring in a few hundred dollars. All right, onward and upward. So far, we've been exploring rooms all along the building's perimeter. But with half the day gone, it's time to head into the interior and find the massive production floors. Look at this place, man. Oh, guys, check this out. This is crazy. You could build cars in here. Number 11, paper machine. I guess this is where the action happened. Damn, look how big that thing this is. This is awesome. Check out these rollers. Are they made of stone? I don't know, jump up there and give it a turn, man. I don't know. Wow, it looks like granite. This paper machine was the heart of the factory. It's hard to imagine that at one time, this mill fed 11 of these monsters. Just one kicked out 2,000 feet of paper per minute. That's something we're putting in the trailer. Oh, yeah! Mark! Yo! Check it out, brother. Fire warnings. We got some sirens, some horns. We got a hooga up there. Hooga! What's that, a flashing light? But right here, just the one, two, three, the three pieces here are pretty cool. Oh, guys, check out the signage up here on that big I-beam. I want to see what it says up there. That is a six-ton ca six capacity. That's a hoist. This that whole is. thing's a hoist. No way. Redding Crane Hoist, Pennsylvania, USA. That's awesome. Hoists like this are reminders of America's industrial heritage. We may not be able to haul out the whole machine, but I could still save some of that history by making a bid on that sign. 
I mean, this is a great find. This is a big space, so why don't you guys check it out, and I'm gonna go scat out in the, in the next room. Give me a holler if you find something cool.